it's Angela Prophet, and you're tuning in to Productive and Profitable Wedding Planning on APTV. Today's tip is communicate, communicate, and communicate. Just because you do a timeline as a planner does not necessarily mean that your vendors are actually going to read it, which I do a timeline so that everybody in the picture, which is about 45 vendors and moving pieces and people, know who is accountable for what. I know what I need to be doing, and I'm there all weekend to make sure that things are going smoothly. But once again, when you're working with vendors that you're not familiar with and you don't know their process or they don't know your process, don't assume just because you send them a timeline, they're gonna read it and they're actually gonna listen. So here's what happened. I was doing a wedding, and after the wedding, the photographers were supposed to bring the bride and groom into the tent about 15 minutes after the ceremony. Main reason because after the ceremony, there was no alcohol at this event. And so as you know, when there's no alcohol, people seem to split pretty quickly. So we wanted to get the first dance, we wanted to get the cake cutting, the father-daughter dance, mother-son dance, all those special moments so that people could see those. Then they could go off into the field and take as many pictures as they wanted. But what did the photographers do? Well. I'm in the tent waiting, 15 minutes goes by, 30 minutes goes by, 45 minutes goes by, an hour goes by, and I have the mother of the bride breathing down my neck, asking, where, where's the bride and groom? Where's the bride and groom? Well, at this time, I didn't have the cell phone number with the photographers because I never worked with them before, dumb me. I didn't use radios at the time, again, dumb me. We were out on 400 acres, and they were nowhere to be found. It was awful, and guests started dropping off like flies, just leaving left and right. There were hundreds and hundreds of people there. Did I mention it was outdoors, and it was really, really hot outside, and the tent had no air conditioning, no fans, no ventilation, so why would you stay around waiting for the bride and the groom? They already opened the buffet, so people had already eaten. They were ready to eat cake, see the first dance, and split. So when the bride and groom finally made it back to the tent, probably 75% of the guests were gone. And who were they looking at? Me. Who gets cussed out by the parents? Me. So again, just because I had it on the timeline, shame on me for not communicating and assuming that the photographers read my timeline and they were actually gonna follow suit. Now, again, we did discuss about 15 minutes, but the photographer's reaction was, oh my God, it was a beautiful sunset and we got amazing pictures. I'm like, well, that's amazing but we're not gonna have any guests here to share all of these special moments. We have cake for like over 350 people. It's pretty much gonna go to waste because you took your sweet time. So again, just be open with all of your vendors, especially if you haven't worked with them before and make sure that you communicate, communicate, and communicate so everyone has a good experience. Did you like this video? If you did, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can even leave me a comment, and if you have a wedding planning question, send it my way. If you want even more great resources to create a productive and profitable wedding planning business, plus some email updates from me that I only talk about in my email, come on over to my website, angelaprofit.com, and be sure to sign up for email updates. Thank you so much for tuning in to Productive and Profitable Wedding Planning on APTV.